What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today I'm gonna to be showing you some settings that you need to change on your iPhone right away. So these are gonna be some of the settings that will have an impact on your battery life, your privacy, and just overall ease of use throughout iOS. Now, if you only want settings to change for better battery life, I did make a separate video for that specifically a while back and I will leave that linked down in the description below and also in the cards up in the top right. So let's go ahead and get into these settings that you should strongly consider changing. So the first one is one that you hope you never have to use but if you go into your settings and go to health and then go to medical ID right here down at the bottom you will see two very important settings that you absolutely need to change or even just enable if you have not enabled them already and that is emergency access when locked and also share during emergency call now this bottom one share during emergency call is only available in iOS 13.5 and above so you will need to be on at least iOS 13.5 to see this one right here but you should have at least at the bare minimum, this one right here enabled show when locked. And if you don't know how to do that, if it just says disabled, just go to your edit button right here. Make sure you fill out all your information as accurately as possible, including any medical conditions, you know, your blood type, organ donor, things like that. And then scroll down and you will see the two toggles right here. And you can also add in emergency contacts right there. This whole section is just something you need to strongly consider looking at and, you know, adding things in here because once again, you hope you never have to use it, but it could be very, very beneficial if that time comes. The next one also has to do with health and mainly applies to those who have AirPods or wear headphones a lot. So if you go into your settings and go to privacy and then go to health, up at the top right here, or the second one right here, you'll see headphone audio levels. And from here, you wanna make sure that both of these toggles are on, both measure levels and include other headphones. So what this does, as you could read right here, is that it basically just records the sounds and measures the audio levels so it can determine if you're listening to music too loud or you know the sounds around you are too loud or if they're okay. If you go into your health application, you can actually go to this section right here. So if you go to browse and then go to hearing, you will see headphone audio levels right there. Tap on that and you will see a graph of if your exposure to audio is okay or if you're listening to things too loud or if you've been outside with like jets flying over if it's been too loud and it will tell you in decibels how loud you know your average uh, exposure is to the audio levels and things like that you can see a lot of great information in here the next setting that you need to consider changing is also inside of the privacy section right here let's go to location services and then scroll down to system services and this one right here, networking and wireless. So this was a pretty controversial topic about a month ago and I made a video specifically on this, but it turned out to be not a huge deal because it doesn't really like track you all the time like a lot of people seem to think. But anyways, what it is, is it's basically a chip from Apple, the U1 chip, and it allows the new iPhones to detect its exact position relative to other devices in the same room. So. It's kind of hard to explain. I will leave my video where I explained it down in the description below, but just know if you want full privacy, you can go ahead and turn that off, but you will also get this alert right here. Turning off location for networking and wireless may affect Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and ultra wideband performance. Now, I did test this. It's not really gonna affect your Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, but of course it will affect the ultra wideband performance, which is basically where you can like turn your phone to airdrop and things like that. So if you don't use that at all and you don't care at all about the U1 chip, you can go ahead and disable that if you don't want anything being tracked on your phone. The next setting that you guys need to change immediately is inside of your iTunes and App Store settings right here. Go ahead down and disable in-app ratings and review. So basically this will not allow apps to ask you for a, like a five-star review right when you open up the app. Like you don't even have time to play the game and it asks you for a review or what you think about the app and things like that. So you can disable that. And I would definitely go ahead and disable that because a lot of these applications, especially free applications, will be pretty intrusive and you know really force you to rate the application, which can get annoying. So I would go ahead and disable that. Also at the top of this section is automatic downloads for music, apps, books, and also we have app updates right there, which I would strongly consider turning automatic updates on for your applications, just so they don't build up and you have to do them all at one time. But automatic downloads for applications is something that a lot of people have asked me in the past. Basically they ask, why does every application that I download on my iPhone downloading onto my iPad as well? I don't want that, I only want the app on my iPhone. And that's because this right here, apps under automatic downloads is selected to on. So you wanna go ahead and turn that off unless you want all your apps going to all the devices connected to your Apple ID. The next one has to do with answering phone calls. So if we go into our settings and then go to accessibility, touch, and then go all the way to the bottom and you will see this section right here, call audio routing. And it says, call audio routing determines where audio will be heard during a phone call or FaceTime audio. And if you tap on that, you get the option to select either automatic, 
Bluetooth headset or speaker. So I know a few people who always answer the phone and then put it on speaker like right after they answer. But if you wanna save you know, a couple button presses, you could have it set to speakerphone so that every time you take a call or make a phone call, it's already automatically on speakerphone. And you could do the same with audio headset if you want to, or you could just have it set to automatic. You also have the option here to auto answer calls if you want that to be enabled. Now, speaking of phone calls, if you want your phone calls to be a lot better quality in terms of you talking and also the audio you hear back, you should go into your accessibility here and go to audio visual. And you will see right here, we have phone noise cancellation. And it says, noise cancellation reduces the ambient noise on phone calls when you are holding the receiver to your ear. So basically, people that you're calling will be able to hear you better if you have this turned on because the phone will use noise cancellation and block out you know, background noise so that the person on the receiving end of the phone will hear you better. And yet another setting you might want to change having to do with phone calls is if you go into your settings and then go down to phone and then scroll down and you will see this section right here, call silencing and blocked contacts, silence unknown callers. And you can read right there, it says, calls from unknown numbers will be silenced, sent to voicemail and displayed on the recents list. Incoming calls, will continue to ring from people in your contacts, recent outgoing calls, and Siri suggestions. So this is something you may want to turn on. The only reason I have mine turned off is because sometimes I get phone calls from people who are not showing up in my series suggestions or not in my contacts. Maybe I called like a, you know, a dealership about my car or something like that. And they're not going to be anywhere in my phone. And I don't want them to be silenced because I'm anticipating that phone call. So if you have this turned on, you may want to consider turning it off if you get phone calls like that, like me. But if not, you may want to turn it on. It's just a matter of personal preference and you know what kind of phone calls you receive. But just know that that is there built into iOS 13 and you should strongly consider using it or disabling it. Now, if you have AirPods and you get a lot of text messages, you may really benefit from this next setting, which is announce messages with Siri. So this is one of my favorite features in iOS 13. So if you go to your settings and go to notifications, you'll see right here we have announce messages with Siri. And you wanna go ahead and turn this on because it is a great, a fantastic, feature. So basically what this does is when you get a text message, you'll hear this little bing in your ear from your AirPods and it will say who the text message is from and read the text message in a really nice, like calming voice. It's Siri, but it's like a much better Siri. It sounds really good and it sounds much better than just a ding or your notification sound when you get a text message. And you can see you have messages right here. If you go ahead and tap on that, you can also see you can announce messages from contacts, recents, favorites, or just everyone. I would probably recommend having that on everyone just in case. And again, just a great feature. I definitely recommend having this if you do have AirPods. I recommend enabling this feature. So now let's talk about a FaceTime feature that you may want to have enabled or disabled. So if you go to your settings and go to FaceTime, if you scroll all the way down, you'll see this toggle right here for automatic prominence. And it says during group FaceTime calls, the tile of the person speaking will automatically become larger. So if you don't want your bubble to become larger and you know your face being big and everybody else is being small, you may want to go ahead and disable that. That way when you're speaking, you know, you're not the big bubble. You know, if you're only in a group FaceTime with a few people and people know your voice and things like that, that may not be necessary. So you can go ahead and disable that if you want to. So these next couple of settings will help you save some battery life on your iPhone. So if you go into your settings and go to privacy right here and then scroll all the way down to analytics and improvements, you want to go ahead and disable probably most of these. Now, these could be beneficial for app developers and things like that, but if you want to save battery life, I would definitely go ahead and disable most, if not all, of these toggles right here. The only reason I had this turned on is because this device is my beta testing device, so I like to have at least some analytics turned on, but on my main device, I will have all of these disabled just to save the most battery life possible. And if we go back, that's not it. So if we go to our location services right here and then go all the way down to the bottom to system services, you wanna go ahead and disable all of the location-based things right here. So alerts, Apple ads, suggestions, I would definitely go ahead and turn those off. And then down to product improvement, I would turn all four of these toggles off as well. iPhone analytics, popular near me, routing and traffic, and also improve maps. I would also recommend toggling on this setting right here, which is status bar icon. That way you can see up in your status bar when an application is using your location. As you can see, I have the little location arrow right there. So definitely recommend turning that on while all these remain off. The next setting has to do with COVID-19. And this is a very important one for those on iOS 13.5. And mainly if you're watching this in you know mid 2020 right now, because this may not be as big of a deal later on down the road, but right now it's a pretty big deal. So if you go into your settings and go to privacy, and then scroll down to health, up at the top you'll see COVID-19 exposure logging. You wanna go ahead and enable this 
if you are able to and if you have the active application installed. Now I made a whole video explaining this feature and what it does and how this COVID-19 exposure logging is super beneficial and how it doesn't track you like some people think. So I will leave that linked down in the description below if you are curious about how this feature actually works. And the only reason I put this near the end of this list is just because we don't have an application that actually allows us to be enabled just yet because it's still in beta testing. But I will leave you know, an updated link in the description if an application does come out that allows us to enable this feature. But I did want to mention this regardless because it is a very important setting that you should at least know where it is on your iPhone right now. But anyways, getting back to some more fun stuff, if we go into our settings and then go down to Safari right here, there are quite a few things in here you want to go ahead and change. So the first one would be under close tabs right here. So go to close tabs and you want to make sure this is either set to manually one day, one week or one month. Now I would recommend most people probably do one month because I don't know about you guys, but I leave a lot of my tabs open for a good while. I forget how many actually build up and I don't want to sit there and close out of every single tab because it's very time consuming. So I would like Safari and you know iOS to automatically close my tabs, all my tabs every single month. So you can have that set or if you, you know, use Safari a lot, you may want to do that every week, but you know, I would recommend doing either every week or every month. I have mine set to every month on my main iPhone. Also, if we go up a little bit under general, you will see autofill, go to that. And you want to make sure that both of these are turned on, especially credit cards right here. If you want to have very fast checkout when you're buying things online from Safari, you should definitely have credit cards set right there. And if you go to save credit cards, you can see if you have things saved in your wallet, they will show right there, or you can add a new credit card straight from this section right here. And then also, if you're really into privacy, I would go down to these settings for websites right here and make sure that camera is denied for every website. Make sure that microphone is denied for every website and even location. You can have that denied if you want to. Sometimes it is beneficial to have location access on certain websites. So I keep that on ask, but I make sure that camera and microphone is turned off. That way, no website you know, it's going to try to use my microphone or my camera without me knowing. It's gonna be automatically denied. And then if you wanted to clear a little bit of space, if you're running really low on space, if you go into your advanced section right here and then go to website data, you can actually clear all your website data straight from this section right here. You can see right here, remove all website data and it's gonna clear everything. So mine's only 147 megabytes, so it's not a ton, but yours may be in the gigabytes. So you may wanna go ahead and remove that if you are you know, really wanting to save some space. But just know that that will build back up the more and more you use Safari. And then the final setting I wanted to cover is inside of your settings and go to Siri and search, and then go ahead down to Siri suggestions and disable all of these if you want the best battery life. Now, these things could come in handy. They could be beneficial and you know make your process faster on your iPhone if you use them. But me personally, I don't ever use suggestions anywhere on my main iPhone. And this has been known to cause battery drain issues. So I would just go ahead and disable all three of these unless you really, really use them a lot. Just kidding, there's actually one more I wanted to show you guys. I'm really giving you some bonus tips in here. But anyways, if you go into your settings and then go down to accessibility and then scroll all the way down to Siri, there's also this section right here for always listen for Hey Siri. So it says listen for Hey Siri when your iPhone is facing down or covered. So you can either have that turned on or turned off. I like to have that turned on just so I can always talk to my phone and ask Siri a question or tell it to do something whenever I want to. So that's something I would recommend, at least knowing where it is. So you could turn that on or off depending on how you use your phone. But anyways, guys, those are 16 settings, at least 16 settings that I think you guys should be aware of and that you may want to turn on or off. Now, if you guys want to see another episode of this with more settings to change, let me know because there are a ton. I had to condense this list just to make it into one video because I think there may be, you know, another video stemming from this in the future. So let me know if you want to see more beneficial settings that you may want to change. But if this video was helpful, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure you guys do subscribe so you can see a lot more iOS tips and tricks videos just like this one. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.